Prophecy Club. Now, with this next topic, you may be thinking, does this really fit in with Bible prophecy? So I'm going to ask you, in the last days, do you think that there's a good possibility that we are not going to be able to access health care? We're not going to be able to access grocery stores and many other things, especially when we refuse to take the mark of the beast. So then don't you think, don't you think that building our faith to the point where we can get a miracle and learn that God really does heal us these days is very important and does relate to the last days and does relate to Bible prophecy. Thurman Scrivener has had an international healing ministry for some 36 years and has a near 100% healing success rate for many diseases. Now, he's quick to point out he's not the healer. Jesus is the healer, but... He gives you the scriptures and countless stories of people who have received the faith to be healed in his meetings. Now, he's going to be speaking at the Prophecy Club Friday, March 17, from 7 to 10.30, and then Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m., and he's going to be praying for people that evening from 7 to 10.30. And the purpose of these two meetings before the evening meeting Saturday evening is to build your faith. He strongly recommends that people attend both meetings because that's how you get your healing. It's not from him. It's from your faith, and he'll help you to build your faith. That's Friday. That's Friday, May 17th from 7 to 1030, and then Saturday afternoon from 1 to 3. Those are both faith-building meetings, then that evening from 7 to 10.30, he's going to be praying for people, and we're going to believe that God is going to heal many people. Those people that will get the faith up, we believe, will be healed. So I encourage you to come on out, and I encourage you to listen. And here's just a sample of Thurman Scribner teaching on healing. I don't ever, 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 ever have to ask for that sin a second time. Because he said he put it as far as the east is from the west when I confessed it. Never to be remembered again. So if I come back the next day and say, oh God, yesterday I messed up and I asked you to forgive me. But Lord, I ask you to forgive me for that again today. I didn't do it again, but I ask you to forgive me. He's going to say, what are you talking about? You know, I I, I put that as far as the east is in the west and you hadn't done it no more. So you don't have anything to confess. You know what? If we keep doing that, you know what that tells God? We sure are wishy-washy. You know it? I mean, I asked you to forgive me yesterday, and I'm back today pleading, asking you to forgive me, and uh, that means you didn't believe yesterday. See, we need to get over that, do we not? Who forgive all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases. And then there's 4 and 5. Well, over here, this is a good, a good thing, so let's read this. Verse 4 and 5, let's see what it says. Who redeemeth your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So, Alan, we're going to walk in health and youth? Amen. We are, are we not? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm going, to walk, I'm going to be a young man forever. I'm never going to get old. Are you, Bill? I'm, I'm, we, we may be looking like we're getting a little older, but uh, we're not going to get very much older. I'm going to believe God and I'm going to walk in divine health because I'm going to obey the king. And when the trials and tests of life come, I'm going to come against those things in the name of Jesus. And I'm not going to let anything put me down. Now then, when I have these trials and tests, I got to realize they're there to increase my faith and build me up. I'm telling you what. I mean, uh, uh, Jane back there a while ago, this lovely lady sitting over, she lost her husband uh, what, 15 months ago? 15 months ago, she lost Jack. He was a, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Jack and the kind of man of faith she had. Jack used to love to come here and sit here and we discuss the Word of God. I mean, they're such a lovely couple. They love Jesus. And, of course, as we ministered to each other, our, our faith goes up and Jack's faith was getting high. And one day they were having some kind of a little get-together with a family and one of the men there, I don't know if it was an uncle or something, one of the men took one of the little boys, Zach, I believe was his name, the little grandson, and he's playing with the kids, and he reaches down and gets little Zach, which I think he's eight or ten years old, I think, somewhere along there, and he grabs him by the heels, and he picks him up, and he starts slinging him around in a circle like this. You know, I mean, kids love that. You know that? The little body's going straight out. 
Now think about, he's going fast enough for a 10-year-old kid to stay straight out. So he's slinging him pretty fast. And then, of course, the man that's going around gets a little dizzy, and he happens to step over a little closer, and little Zach's eyeball hit the trailer pitch ball on a pickup. Now for the average Christian, average unbeliever, what did you think everybody would think when they heard that head, bam, hit that trailer hitch? Dead, broke, busted his head open, busted his eye, no telling what, anything's possible, right, young lady? But Jack, the grandfather, he goes running over there and he grabs that little boy's head and he, he said, God, in the name of Jesus, no damage, no, no bruises. When I take my hands off this boy, his eye is going to be perfect in the name of Jesus. And he took his hands off. And what, what was wrong with Jack? Zach? Nothing. Nothing. Now, if, I, if, if Jack was still alive today, if I needed somebody to pray for me, guess who I'd go to? <laughs> That's the kind of men you won't pray for you, right? You want men that can touch the hand of God. And I'm telling you what, the average man, I mean, I think everybody there that day besides Jack, in their own heart, they knew that boy's head was busted open and he might even die. But granddaddy, he knew who he was. He knew the power that was alive in him. And he knew what he could do by faith how when he touched the hand of the king. And that day he touched the hand of the king. I can just see him up there in heaven right now saying, Thurman, tell that story again. I love to hear that. <laughs> Can't you just see them leaning over the portals of heaven watching us? He said, yeah, boy, that, that praise God. He said, Lord, I'd really love to see you do what you did for my grandson that day. Just think. Think about that. You're swinging a boy. How old was he, Jane? About 10? Oh, okay, six or eight then when this happened. But six or eight years old, slinging the little guy in a circle, and he get, moves over far enough to where his head, his eyeball hit right on the trailer hitch ball that'd kill anybody that's like hitting him in the head with a baseball bat right it, you would he felt his eye go all the way to the back of his head and back but because of jack's faith in god what kind of faith does it take to run over there and grab that little boy and put your hands on him and start screaming the word of god it took great faith and that faith moved the hand of our king. Because Jack says, when I take my hands off, Father, in Jesus' name, I don't even want a bruise. And when he took his hands off, he was perfect, wasn't he, Jane? Perfect. Now, what kind of a God do we serve, ladies and gentlemen? He's an awesome God. What moves his hand? Faith. Faith. That's what does it. Yes, faith is what moves his hand. Now, look here who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Well, if the Lord forgives all of my sins, all of my iniquities, heals all of my diseases, crowns me with loving kindness, and renews my youth like the eagles, why am I going to go around saying, oh, I'm getting so old, I just can't make it anymore. Well, that's, that's, I used to do that. I don't do that no more. I go around saying, praise God. I said, I'm a young man. Uh, yeah, I am a young man. I may be nearly 74. Right now I'm just 73. I'll be 74 in December. So I, 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 get, I like to turn the numbers around and say, well, I'm 37. <laughs> That's what I feel like. I'm 37. In fact, I got tickled at Bruce's son yesterday when we were out there t as we were tearing those buildings down. How I'm there with that big old beam, that big old pipe tool I built with them forks on it, and I'm jerking those things, jerking them floors out. There's a 20-year-old boy. He looks over at me and he says, Mr. Scrivener. How old are you? I said, 73, but I'm fixing to be 74 in December. He said, if I can do half what you can do when I get to be 73, I will be happy. I thought, wow. Do you know, I think that we as men today ought to be some kind of a testimony for the younger men. When they see us, they ought to say, I want to be like you. They shouldn't say, I want to be like some football player that's sleeping with every woman he can find out there in the world. I don't want that. I want to walk holy. I want to be a living example to the young men. I want them to see the power of God as they see me. I want them to see Jesus. That's the way every man in the church should be. We should want people, when they see us, to see one person, the king, and his power. Okay, let's go down to another verse. I want us to go to Psalms 107, verse 20. 
107 verse 20. I want to show you what he says there. 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So what did he send? His word. So how do we build our faith? By getting in the word. By believing the promises. If God says he forgives all of our iniquities, when we ask, how many does he forgive? If he says he heals all of our diseases, how many does he heal? All. all. Now, then we have got to get to where we can believe that. We ha- that has, this has got to become a reality to everyone in the church that God said something, he will do it. Of course, the thing about it is, if God said in his word that if he does something, if, he, if we want him to do something and he does do that, then if he tells us if we disobey, where he also said, it shall come to pass, if you don't obey me, what's going to happen? That's going to happen too, right? In other words, if you don't obey me, then I will do whatever. I'm, like he said, if you do not obey me, I will curse you and your children. He'll do that too. And it's just that most people in church don't believe that God will do these things today, but he absolutely will. Now then, I want us to go to... Matthew 8, 13. Matthew 8, 13. I want you to look at this. This is an awesome story about how the centurion, he came to Jesus. He had a, a son or a worker uh, that was, had cerebral palsy, and he wanted Jesus to heal him. And, so, and Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And he said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. I want you just to speak the word, and I know my servant will be healed. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Now then, when we ask Jesus for something, we'll be right back after this message. Okay, you want a deal? Well, I've got a deal for you. you got four DVDs valued at $120 for a gift of just $40. First, you get Bill Sneblin's Mind Control Gun Confiscation, and he explains how the federal government mind control programs like Monarch can force a person to do anything they want, including shooting innocent children. Bill ties the start of these programs to the start of mass killings and leaves little doubt that this is the work of evil in high places with plans to confiscate our weapons. Dr. Stephen Houston talks about the rise of the beast, the ten European families that could become the ten toes of Daniel's statue, the Vatican and Jesuit order, the occult and Pope John II funeral, St. Hildegard's prophecy, three world wars, the link between the Catholic Church and Freemasonry. Then, two DVDs from Stan Monteith. First, his famous Secrets of the Illuminati, where he exposes the evil elite that ruled the world. And second, in planned population reduction, he exposes the dangers of Vioxx, artificial fertilizers, pesticides, injections, immunizations, vaccinations, genetically altered seeds, cell phones, diet drinks, soy products, mercury preservatives, MSG, aspartame, fluoridated water, suppressed cures, chemtrails, anthrax, cancer treatments, DDT, creative diseases, milk additives and processes, MTBE, Splenda, and that's just a few of them. Four DVDs valued at $120 for a gift of just $40. And if you order before April 1st, you get free shipping. Prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. Or prophecyclub.com. Order the spring gift offer. The spring gift offer. Prophecyclub.com. And now, back to the program. Now then, when we ask Jesus for something... We have got to get to the point where we believe it's done. Belief. This is the major thing about getting your healing today. After you've repent of your sins, we do not believe the promises of God. We don't believe. I mean, just think, that little lady the other day, I was just telling you about it, Baltimore, had, had her list of things she had. She had a list, a good grief, 20 things wrong with a little, what, 30-year-old woman or whatever she was. She wasn't very old at all, just a precious little lady. And she's got a list of things wrong with her. Do you know anybody in the church that's got a list? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what's wrong? They don't believe. They think they do, but they don't believe. If they believed, according to the scripture, Jesus says, as you have believed. So if Jesus said, as you have believed, so be it done unto you. If you come up here and ask me, I have diabetes. I say, you don't love yourself. Well, okay. Or you got a generational curse that brought it on you. And you say, I have diabetes. I said, okay. Jesus has paid the price for that. He redeemed you from that curse. According to Galatians 3, uh, and if he's redeemed you from the curse, if you, if you are redeemed from the curse, then if Jesus said you're redeemed from the curse, then are you redeemed from the curse? Yeah. yeah. If Jesus said it, I'm redeemed. So if I'm redeemed from the curse, then when I confess my sin and say, Lord, I'm sorry that, in fact, I'll tell you about the little boy, uh, that 13-year-old boy, when I found out his mom and dad had sex before they got married, he was born with eye problems, and the retinas never had developed in his eyes. So he couldn't focus on nothing. He could see things, but nothing could focus. In other words, like those words up there on the board, up there, instead of being able to see saved, healed, made whole, he could just see fuzzy stuff. The retinas had never developed. Well, God had stricken this boy with this curse because his mother and dad had sex before they got married. Now then, God doesn't do the same thing to everybody every time. He will curse you different ways. And sometimes it will not be your children. Sometimes it will be you. But in this case, because, and when I told him, I said, did you all not know that sex out of sight of marriage was wrong? And the girl, the woman immediately said, yes, Mr. Shrivener, we knew it was wrong. What we didn't know was we didn't know there was a consequence that went with it. I mean, yeah, we knew God says no sex, but you know, you know, when you're 20 years old and your physical desires are there and you're at home or in a bed together or in the back seat of a car or whatever and the, everything's rising up in you, you forget what God says. Is that right? Unfortunately, that's what happens. And so they called in that bed together and yes, they had sex. They knew it was wrong, but they didn't do it too often, but once in a while. Before they got married, then they knew they were going to get married. So what's wrong with sex before marriage if you know you're going to get married? Why is it wrong? Uh, Because God said it's wrong. Oh, he counts, huh? (laughs) I think he does, right? If God said, I will judge every act of sexual immorality, well, they didn't realize their sex. I don't know how many times they had sex before they got married, but they did. But they repented. When they heard my teaching, she said, we repented. We just didn't know there would be a consequence with our first son. And so that's why his eyes are messed up. So mother and dad both repented of their sins. I said, now, son, since the sin has been confessed, you're now redeemed from the curse. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Is that what that says? Gal- I might throw that up there just to let them see it. Christ hath, the word hath means he already has done it. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. You do everything through believing or faith. And so they repented of the sin. I told the little boy, I said, son, you're in luck. Now your mom and dad has repented of their sin of sex before marriage. And I said, now then, you're redeemed from the curse. So since you're redeemed from the curse, what do you think it is that's in his eyes that's causing his eyes to be bad? Demons. That's exactly right. Demons. Now then, as a son or a daughter of God walking in obedience to God's word, how much power did God give us over the demons? Wow. Is that a good deal? Luke 10, 19, and 20. Let me show you that wonderful promise. Look at this. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 and 20. You need to see these things, or you need to write them down, or the scripture reference or something, so you can go back. Luke 10, 19, and 20. Behold, Jesus is speaking, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now, the serpent and the scorpion is the devil and his demons, and over all the power of the enemy. So who is our enemy? The devil and his demons. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So what's, if we're walking in obedience to God's word, what can hurt us? Nothing. I mean, that's what he said. So he said, nevertheless, 
in this rejoice not that these spirits or these evil spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So if that demon is in that little 13-year-old boy standing right here, it's got to be subject to me, and I command that spirit to leave. What does he have to do? He has to go. It's exactly right. I am a representative, you are a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, brother? So if we're sons of God, daughters of God, we're walking in obedience to God's word, then when we speak to a demon, what does he have to do? He has to do whatever you tell him to do. Go, whatever. So I commanded the spirit to leave the little boy's eyes. I commanded the spirit to go back to the abyss and never come back to this child ever again in the name of Jesus. I said, now, Father, I want to thank you for sending the Holy Spirit because what has the demon done to his eyes? Messed them up. He can't see. So I said, now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to send the precious Holy Spirit in there to heal and restore this little guy's eyes and make his eyes perfect in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you for doing it. I said, son, do you believe that? He said, yes, I do. I said, then say, thank you, Jesus, for healing my eyes. He said, Lord, thank you for healing my eyes. And then he's standing here looking this way, and man, he looks up at that board all of a sudden, he says, Mom, those, those words on the board, they just come into perfect focus. I mean, how long does it take Jesus to fix them? It, it, can't he just do it in a heartbeat? He said, wow, I can see perfect. And, and he started looking around the room, he said, Mother, everything in the room is so sharp and clear, I can just see perfect. Now just think, if Mom and Dad had it been obedient to not have sex until they got married, the little boy wouldn't have had to have 13 years of that. 13 years. And what if his mom and dad had never heard about this ministry? What if they had never brought him to a man of faith? That little boy could have been like that all his life. Now, you can associate with that. You wouldn't want... How old are you, son? 29. Okay. You, you, you see pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean, but you still see pretty good. I mean, your retinas are not messed up. You can focus on everything, right? Can you imagine not being able to correct your vision? It's all blurry, and you're going to be like that, and maybe you live 70 or 80 years, and you're going to be like that all your life, and it was because your mother's and dad's sin? Right, it wouldn't be much of a lie. It wouldn't be much of a lie. But you didn't know that. They didn't know that. But why do we not know these things? We don't know these things because we don't believe what we read in this book. When God says, I will judge Every act of sexual immorality among my church, if you're a church member and you get into some kind of sexual immorality, you have no idea what kind of judgment God may bring upon you or the other person. There's no telling. He's God. You know, he can do what he wants to. You know, and I'll tell you what, you can do anything you want to, but you can't tell him what to do. You know that? You know, last time I checked, he's the boss. He's the king. And aren't we glad? Are we glad he treats all of us the same? <laughs> we are so grateful, Lord. I am so grateful. Wow, praise God. Now then, if we, if we go back to that Matthew 8, 13, let's go back to Matthew 8, 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, as the centurion had told him, I, I don't need you to come over to my house. I'm a man under authority. I speak to men, they obey me. I know you're a man of spiritual authority. So when you speak, I know my servants going to be healed. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so be it done unto you. Now then, when people come out here and they say, well, I heard about this Living Savior Church. I'm going to go out there and give it a shot. Maybe God will do something. Maybe he won't. You know what? When you leave, you know what you're going to get? Unless you change your way of thinking, you ain't going to get nothing. Because guess who is not the healer at the Living Savior Church? <laughs> You're right. It ain't me. Guess who is the healer out here? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. I guarantee everybody that's got healed out here, he has done it for you. I didn't do it. I just prayed the prayer of faith for you. Now then, let's go to Matthew eight seventeen. That's just a little bit down. And I want you to see this awesome promise in Matthew eight seventeen. Let me read verse 16 too since it's on the screen. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with demons. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Now, 
Who was it that was making these people sick? The scripture says the devils, but there's only one devil, but there's multitudes of demons. So it literally is translated incorrectly there where they translated it devils. It should have been demons, but uh, it's the same word. So, but anyway, they were possessed or demonized with demons and Jesus cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Now then, look what he says in verse 17 that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself, Jesus, He took our infirmities or our sins, and He bare our sickness. Now then, let's stop and think about that a minute, folks. If Jesus took our sin, how many of our sins are left? I mean, when we come to Jesus and accept Him as Lord and Savior, if He bore your sin or your infirmities, do you think he left any of them? Did he clean you up as clean as a white sheet? You're clean and perfect. Okay, well, how is it we can see that so simple, that he bore that and took away all of our sins he didn't leave in it? Time has run out, but I want to say thank you for listening, and thank you for your prayers and your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Lindsay Williams has just come out with more information, and it's called Cyprus, the Elite Money Grab. Topics are Cyprus, the startling real story you didn't get. The American dollar, how long? Healthcare, a trap. America, the world's only hope. Saudi Arabia, look out. Iran, saber rattling. Derivatives, collapse being discussed. Behind closed doors, all of these items have already been decided. It's called Cyprus, the elite money grab, not available on the internet. You must call 785-266-1112. A single DVD gift of $27 or more, call 785-266-1112. Cyprus, the elite money grab by Lindsay Williams. Call now, 785-266-1112, 785-266-1112. Call now. Thurman Scribner has had an international healing ministry for 36 years and has a near 100% healing success rate for many diseases. He is not the healer. Jesus is the healer. But he gives you the scriptures and countless stories of people who have received the faith and received healing in his meetings. He'll speak Friday, May 17th from 7 to 1030. And Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m., he'll be praying for people from 7 to 1030. He strongly recommends that people attend both meetings to build your faith for your healing. That's Friday, May 17th from 7 to 10.30 and Saturday from 1 to 3 and then prayer from 7 to 10.30 that evening. As always, we suggest a gift of $10 at the door and a free will offering will be taken. That's the Prophecy Club, 2540K Avenue in Plano, behind the Whataburger. Friday, May 17th, 7 to 10.30, Saturday from 1 to 3 and then prayer Saturday from 7 to 10.30. Both DVDs available for a gift of $40. See you there! Our office received a call saying that Daryl Dumas was looking for someone to debate him on the pre-trib rapture. So, Daryl and I will be debating the rapture. Daryl will be taking the pre-tribulation rapture position trying to convince us that Jesus is going to return prior to any trouble and rapture us off of the earth. I will be taking the post-trib position saying that Jesus will first gather the tares, that's the sinners, bind them into bundles and cast them into the fire. Then he'll gather his wheat or his elect into the barn, according to Matthew 13, 30. Each opponent will have three 20-minute segments with five to six minutes for the opponent rebuttal and a 15-minute summary with questions from the audience following. You can find out all about it at our website, prophecyclub.com. That's Saturday, June 22nd at 3 p.m. In Enterprise, Mississippi, Stan Johnson and Daryl Dumas will be debating the rapture. Thank you for your prayers. 